It's going to be a fun one. Mm-hmm. Welcome, everybody. It's, uh, it's the Sith Council, and it is the day everybody's been waiting for. It is the day that we get to revisit The Last Jedi. Now, I know. For this rewatch series, people are wondering what the hell is going to happen here. And everybody's going to be so nice in the comments, right? Yeah. Well, I know another thing. I know there's a lot of people that were very concerned because Steph and I do not like this movie. And they were wondering, well, come on, this is just going to be a pileup. Well, it is not. I have Last Jedi enthusiast, Mark Yodiest Riley, who is going to be here to defend it. Mike is not going to be here. So it's really just going to be, and we don't want to defend anything. We just want to have a conversation. That's what we've been doing well on this show. And that's what we're going to do here today. Try to be as positive as possible and have conversations the same way that we've been having them about The Amazing Spider-Man and all that. But I'm just letting you people know that this week, what I did for you, I watched The Amazing Spider-Man 2 and this movie in the same week. Don't tell me I don't like you. All right, listen, we got the Sith Council. This is going to be a good one. Let's do it. I can feel your anger. Yeah, you can. Gives you focus. It's fine. Makes you stronger. Thanks so much. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's the second movie of a franchise that had no plan. It is The Last Jedi. Welcome to the show. Joined by Darth Sabra. Do you know how savage it is that you made Mike Kalinowski snow? No, I'm Snow, aren't I? You are. I think I'm Snow. Yeah, I'm Snow. Oh, you are. Yeah, no, no, I'm Snow. He's he's a uh, yeah. I'm I'm a I'm a clone that's been living in oh, a tank. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Love that thumbnail. Yeah. All right. There's there's Steph. And joined for duty. One of the nicest guys I know, and asked me because Andres Ace Cabrera was supposed to come in. He couldn't do it a while ago, and and before we even knew that, my good friend, my buddy, Mark Yodius Riley. We'll he's, see how this goes. By the end. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we're still buddies. Uh, he said, I am ready. <laughs> he, said, he, goes, he goes, I want to come in. He's like, I want to be in for this one. And I said, well, oh, yeah. you know, I'm told Ace. And he's like, oh, man, I can't be here at the moment. So um, I said, Mark, you know, I, I got a spot. You want to come in? He's like, hell yeah, I want to come in. I want to come in. I'm glad, though. Movie. I'm glad because I think that what, yeah. what it's uh, the last thing in the world. And I said this to Steph since day one. I said, I don't want it to just be me and you talking about how much we don't like this movie. We need because. It's so funny. We are Amazing Spider-Man Two, right? It's now, a movie that come on. That's a movie that most people. I'll tell you. When was the last time you watched a movie? And we're going to talk about this movie. Don't worry. But when was the last time you watched it? Amazing Spider-Man Two. Mm-hmm. I think the day it came out in theaters. Same. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Watch it again. He goes, well, yeah. well, yeah. What I'll tell you is, is it a good movie? No. Um, but it's not. It's it's okay to watch. Like, yeah. And I'm 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 not piling on here already. I had more fun watching that than I did. <laughs> oh my god, it's already started. <laughs> I had more it's fun. I just think I had more fun. What's the better made film? Come on, this movie is the Last Jedi, one hundred percent. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a better made and film. story and acting. And let's not mythology. Let's not get the, let's, the way let's it not, echoes let's the not, other. What? Let's not. Get I'm sorry. Silly, no. Okay. Um, all right. Well, we can. <laughs> so to give to give context for some people who may be joining for the first time, I have had a very strange relationship with this film. Very strange. You when have. I saw, when I saw the movie in the theater. And I've talked about this many times, but I, but I think it's relevant to this conversation, obviously. Saw the movie the first time. Didn't know what the hell to think of it. Didn't tweet about it. People were like, why aren't you tweeting about it? I was like, because I need to sit on this thing because I don't know. Mm. Saw it again the next day and said, this is a well-made film. Stand by that. Told myself, all right, I'm Kool-Aiding this thing. I'm, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid a little bit and I'm liking it. And, I'm, and this is a really good Star Wars movie. Mm. And then I watched it again. And then I watched it again. And for some reason, this is just one of those movies for me, and I know it's very different for the man I'm sitting across from. Yeah. It gets worse and worse. It took me three days to finish this this time. Um, yeah. It's, I just, and I think that it's it goes back, we, so on a Force Awakens podcast that we did, I think it's still, it, it's, it has the same problem that the Force Awakens has, is that now that you know what comes after it, now that you know what came before it, they're clearly not having them. This, I think we agree on. There was no plan in the overall franchise, so it hurts. Each movie is hurt a little bit more, not as far as enjoyment, because The Force Awakens itself is still a very enjoyable film. 
But when you know what comes after it, you're like, eh. And the same thing with this. Like, there's things that are set up in this or that that, that weren't that you're just like, eh, doesn't go anywhere. Step, before we get to Mark, mm. so you watch this one. Did you did your feelings change at all watching it this time? Yes, I <clears throat> I appreciated the first, uh, the no, the first hour in like 20 minutes is pretty unbearable. I appreciated the l- third act, like the second to half of the second half of the second act in the third act. Yeah. I can appreciate things on it. The first part is almost unbearable because like everything I was attached to in the first in Force it's Awakens negated. is just like, yeah. oh, you know, Poe, he's a dick he's, now. He's an imbecile. <laughs> he's an imbecile. He's not. He's not just a dick. He's an imbecile, and he wasn't an imbecile in the first no. one. He he listened to Leia in the first movie. He he was he was really uh, like he wanted to do things for her. He was always there to, to speak for her. He didn't go against her wishes. He's like, yeah, we took out the dreadnought, and she tells him, yeah, but everyone's dead. Everyone. We could have jumped out of here a while ago. Yeah, they still would have tracked him, but they would have figured it out quicker. He sends Finn and Rose to this cockamamie mission to do. They don't need to. If they don't go on that mission, they get away scot free on the pods due to the plan. He's an imbecile. Why'd they call Moz? Like why? Oh, why, that's why but, was <laughs> but okay, we've said our thing. How can you say that about about Poe in the first movie? He, he wasn't even in the first movie. When he came, he, back, he in Poe, he, he of course yeah. he was. I know he was in the first movie, but he how ha- he had a very minimal part that we didn't get a lot of character. So I'm he not was supposed to die, right? I'm not. He was supposed to die uh, exactly. I'm not try. That doesn't track with me. Um, that take on that because when i see poe in the second movie in the last jedi what opens it feels like it's tracking for me that this is the next escalation here they are escaping their hidden base but by, by the end of force awakens and poe is getting some you know getting he wants to take care of things and i love that it it really started the kind of the duality of the twins that we see in leia taking on poe as her apprentice over to Ray and Luke. I really love that. And I know that I, I think what's hard about The Last Jedi that I get is that it starts with a tone where Star Wars fans, including me, go, yeah, hello? Uh, where Star Wars fans go, that didn't really sound Star Warsy when he goes, you know, your mom. This is kind Marvel humor, you mean? Yeah. That, yeah. Nah, I don't know if it's Marvel humor. I mean, it didn't land. Like that, with the that, Hug situation. The Hug the situation. General, calling him General Hugs. Like, yeah. All right, so real that quick, didn't track with me either. But going back to what but, you said about Poe, because it all, yeah. it's all relevant. He's not in the movie very much in the first one is what you said. It opens with he that in the crawl, the F- Force Awakens, Yeah. that Leia sent her most trusted pilot. Yeah. So to go on this mission, he's there to do whatever she wants to do inside of the conversation. She, he listens to her. He comes back. He's, there's, no, there's no inkling in the parts that he's, he's not in it for a good chunk of it. You're not wrong. But yeah, when yeah. he comes back, there is no inkling that this guy is anything but just a good soldier that listens to Leia. And this one comes out. He wants to do a thing. He does. He's there in the position that they put him in, the Force Awakens, that we've seen. But then he starts, no, I can't come back. I can't do this. And it's just, it's not the character and he goes, he doesn't even, he, like, the, he, throughout this movie, he makes bad decisions, right? Mm-hmm. Until the, and at the very end, then he decides, oh, no, 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 Luke's setting Luke's, Luke's set it up for us to go. W- when did he figure all this out? Out of nowhere. It's just, it's bizarre character development. And then Finn, we've got to agree here that Finn is wasted. Finn is wasted. Finn is wasted in the entire trilogy. Okay. I mean, but I, I, I have a problem with uh, how they handled his character into the third movie. But, yeah. and this is hard because Finn... Tends to run around looking for Ray the whole time and wondering about Ray and wondering, screaming about Ray. And, um, you know, I wish there was something more. And you, you, you said it like when you know what happens in Rise of Skywalker, when you know what happens in Force Awakens. Now we're looking at this thing as a trilogy. Yeah. And it's hard to look at Finn as getting a good come he's up in, he's by the end of this. You know, it's like even you know, Rise of Skywalker, even. No, you know, it's, it's like totally incomplete. It's like he's got the force. He needs to talk to Ray about something and they never mm-hmm. talk about it. No. Um, but, but this, he is. The Force Awakens, I think he has the most to do because yeah. he is this stormtrooper that wants to get out. He's scared, and then he realizes he has a purpose, and he picks up the saber, and he fights, and he's in that tank. And what I thought was so great in this movie was he's around when he after he wakes up, you know, with the with the the bag, and he's and he's figuring it out, and he's around the table with Leia, and he's like, no, 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 this is what they're doing, and he's figuring it out, and he's around the, he's like, oh, okay, he's part of it. Mm-hmm. And then he goes to run off in this goofy relationship that he's got with, and they, and and even and I like Kelly Marie Tran. I the I, character is 
is not good. It is so upsetting because I think she's an incredible actress. She's great. She does great with what she's asked to with do what here. what she's asked to do and the dialogue she's given, which is by far she has the worst dialogue ever. Written, ever. And this it, thing that she does with, after she zaps him and it's like, it's like, come on. She zaps what are you doing him. Here? So she's so about the rules. So she zaps him. But then she's not about the rules because she goes behind General Leia's yes, back right. to a trip that doesn't matter. And a lot of it is inconsistent. It's inconsistent. And their relationship is inconsistent. I think from the beginning, she's a fangirl. And you're going to make them kiss at the end. It just is so It's that. But it's weird. also she zaps him. She doesn't ask like why why he wants to exactly run away. What, and then the fact. And she figures it out. But. She figures. She it runs out. away. She goes to. She goes to the plant. She gets the mission. She goes to Canto Bight. But the thing is, so that so they can track all this stuff, <laughs> but they can't track them going to Canto Bight. And then talk can't. about wasted. Talk mm. about wasted is what's his face from uh, Leftovers. Oh, wasted. My, I wrote in my notes. Justin Theroux. Justin yeah. Theroux. In an alternate reality, I wish he was the character that they sought out for, found, and left Canto Bight ASAP. What if he mm. was arrested? Right afterwards, yeah. in the cell, and it's him. Instead and then they of D got out. Or DJ, we thought this whole thing was going to happen with Benito Del Toro. He's sitting there, comes up with this character choice to do this stutter, which they even said was a mistake. And God, I'm thinking, I love it. Is he going to be a? <laughs> is he going to be like a, a Sith? What's he going to be? What's going to happen? Nothing. He's just some crook that sells him out. You never see him ever again. Yeah, That's it. he's gone. Not for sure. He was Ezra. Did you remember? Remember? No, I'm kidding. Oh, yeah. I'm kidding. Yeah. Remember that rumor. whole it was, thing? Yeah, a lot of rumors were coming yeah, out. Yeah, it, it was. Uh, well, and that's the thing about Star Wars is that every character in 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 the fandom here is we want to connect everything, and sometimes and they do and they do and they did that in Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. You know, I didn't need do. a connection for him though in this. I didn't no, need a connection. I, just I didn't either. To be somebody. I enjoy his character like okay. completely. I I love the choice he made, and maybe if everybody in the film and uh and and it's you know. Behind the scenes, Lucasfilm going, ooh, that was a uh, not a great. It worked for me. It just, I, I just love. That's why you're here. Yeah, yeah. that's why I'm here. I didn't mind his choice. I'm, I'm. What I had a problem with was the entire character arc. Like we focused more on him instead of any Rose or Finn that was worthy. Right. And just like the whole, so weird because Ryan Johnson, I think, is an incredible director and writer, but. They're writing together when she's explaining oppression to Finn, who, like, I think stormtroopers face almost, like, the most oppression yeah. in the galaxy. They're yeah. forced into servitude. Which is yeah. his whole character, which is him, you know, removing the mask and right. doing And that's what J.J. Abrams set up in Force Awakens, is our our big three here, Poe, uh, Ray, and Finn, are all hiding behind a version of a mask. Yeah. Right, we meet Finn, and he's in a mask, and he p takes the mask off. We meet Ray; she's in a mask. She pulls the, the mask off. She's even putting on a helmet, trying on different, fa uh, yeah. uh, you know, things to find a place in the galaxy. And with Finn, in this particular, what I love about his character and and his in interactions his with Ro yeah, okay. in his interactions with Rose is they are the heart of it. They're trying to be the heart of the Star Wars, the galaxy itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now whether it doesn't really play that well for me either, okay. but I see the intention behind it. And that's what I'm trying to, it's like what my big tr problem is with a lot of the last Jedi discourse yeah. is everybody sits around talking about what should have been or that, Oh, you know what they should have done. You guys did it for five minutes about uh, 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 Benicio del Toro's character yeah. and Justin Theroux. Oh, it should have been this. What if they did? What if it didn't. Yeah, I know. You, you, you have to you, like you you're, have you're, to look yeah, at the wait story. A wait a minute. You have been that I'm going to call you on your BS here because you have been many times over on many different shows that we've been on. Are you kidding me? I'm, that, I'm the biggest. Uh, on I know that, that side of uh, Absolutely. it's because of this particular movie that you feel that way because people when it, this this movie is this the movie most, now though it's it's years back. Now. I know, but this movie itself, The Last Jedi, is very similar to me of politics in general it is yeah. it is a it, it, you there are people that if you because you if you like someone you just said there are many things out there in politics that if you don't believe in what somebody says and you believe you're on the right side mm -hmm. and they're not on your side then they're wrong and that's on both sides that's on both sides of this thing too yeah. i can't even tell you how many people colleagues of ours if you like if you don't like last jedi now i will preface it by saying there are ways to talk the way we are like yeah. people and have conversations instead of screaming yelling calling people names and accusing them of doing it like it over a movie sense. it's, it's right. silly it's a movie it's yeah. a dis it's a dis i'm glad you yeah. like it right what? it's a discussion of it but I, I can't even tell you like where you like i don't agree and you do agree i think luke is handled terribly in this oh, film. God. right right and we yeah. can have that conversation and we'll get right? there and we'll yeah. get there but like so I don't go with the whole, you shouldn't say 
this is what should have happened or this happened because it's not what happened. Yeah, but that's the whole point. Your criticism is a movie what you would have rather have seen. Now, is that the only reason that this movie let me down because this didn't happen? No, but they, it's because of things that are set up yeah. that in my head go, well, oh, they were right there. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. But with the Rose and Finn, uh, conver- I don't have a problem specifically with because I agree with you. I loved the themes that they were trying to yeah, portray yeah, with sure. these two characters. I'm with you on that. It's the execution for me yep. right. that is the yep. problem. Like a lot of TLJ um, criticism is like types of political people who are like, this is social justice. I don't think it is. The heart of Star Wars is fighting hate. You know, yeah. so I don't see that in this film. No. Yeah, I don't, it's not that. People say that no matter what. Now, yeah. for whatever it might be, that's that's people's argument yeah. against everything yeah. now. That, that I'm not going near that with a ten foot pole. No. That has nothing to do with with this movie. It's the execution. It's the idea of do I. Again, using the the main reason why Riley's here, Riley, to his heart of hearts, believe that this is a pure, full Star Wars film. I feel the opposite. I think this is a great Battlestar Galactica film. Mm-hmm. I think this is a great science fiction film in general because, like, the Canto Bite scene to me again. You walk into that and you just see it with the sound off, and you don't know those characters. It does not feel like a Star Wars movie to me. It feels like a, it feels like Fifth Element. It looks like mm. the fifth element to me. It looks like, the, like even like the way certain things, it doesn't have that Star Wars feel overall. It's very detached overall for me. The fact that they're there, why they're there, their silly mission is like, we need to get, we need to involve Poe and Rose. What if they go off on this side mission? And they're, and they, they, they oppose this whole thing with, with everything with the, with the uh, what do they call this? The things running around the big horses. Oh, those yeah. yeah and whatever the hell they are. I'm not yeah, trusting you anymore. You called the thing the gob jabber. We've been getting, we've been getting, uh, isn't that gob jammer? Gom or gom. gom, and, and, gom and, and it's not yeah. even her. She's, that's just the thing that she has. That's no, the, I know the box. You were calling her the gob jabber. No, no, I wasn't. <laughs> I, I, that I, was the lady that, that was the Reverend mother. I'm, you were, <laughs> maybe you were, maybe you were sleeping. Um, but either, either way, point is, um, those things and the, the mission of it, it also gave me this thing. What I realized is, and before people say, well, so was empire. This movie wasn't fun for me. Like it wasn't mm. fun. It, it was like, there was not even the throne. Oh, no, 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 no. That, that, that was not, I'm not saying there were good scenes. I'm right. talking about like fun. Like when the, the adventure of when Han, cause empire, the stuff with Han and Leia going through the, the, the cave, the asteroids and, and, yeah. it's fun. It's a lot of fun happening in Empire Strikes Back. I'm not talking about dark tone. You can have a dark tone and still have a fun movie. I think Canto Bite was trying to serve the fun part. It wasn't. It seemed like some strange like Harry Potter thing at one yeah. point. It just it and then and they defy logic so many different times in this movie. Right when when they're running through and the 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 thing hits them in the face you ever see speed head go right off yeah. head goes right off if that happens that's that's the other thing the other part is as they're going through that cannon at the very end they're driving and, and he's going to the cannon she sideswipes him they both be dead blown up from collision right and then he drags her all the way back and and they make it in time well then why didn't she just walk there in the first place what you what do you need to to drive there for this the logic behind some of this stuff in it it drove me crazy and the movie just wasn't fun for me it was mm. dull it was i got bored at a lot of times and i don't like I think again, Daisy Ridley and Ray is my favorite thing of this whole thing. I like, yeah, I like yeah. That. yeah. I'm in complete agreement with that. I have little issue with Ray's arc and the scenes that we get with her are so emotional and beautiful. And I think that I liked the dark tone that they went with, but then when you have General Hux and you compare him to Tarkin, it's just like. How can I take him seriously? He's a goof. He's such a goof. No, he is a goof. And uh, the you German know. accent just. Like <laughs> but it's also every yeah. Sorry, he just he but he never wants he. There's nothing to him except to be a buffoon. I mean, talk about. I mean, you know, I mentioned Finn and everything. Hux unfortunately got the short end of the stick yep. throughout the whole thing. I mean, yeah. when we he's get to Rise of Skywalker, actor. he's a wonderful uh, I love actor. Donald I love for, uh, Force Awakens. He is off the chain. He is just absolutely like, you know. Th- spitting venom the whole time and then we get the last jedi he becomes a little bit more he's a goofball he's like kind of going back into sh- going into a shell and then rise of skywalker just a kind of a yeah left yeah. turn you're like he is what he's the spy now okay because he doesn't like kylo <laughs> it's like what that yeah that that didn't work for me yeah, but again just talking about the last jedi yeah. it's like i see it's like it, hurt, it it's hard for me to see because Movies are so subjective. Of course. Yeah. It's just across the board. It doesn't matter. I mean, you're looking at some of the discourse now with the Eternals, you know, and, right. and some people yeah, talking right. about 
Um, I mean, for God's sakes, Halloween kills. Oh. Everybody lost their ever loving mind for Halloween kills and said this that. and that. I don't and understand this. how anybody. So I had a friend uh, this uh, morning write me. He said, I heard your show on it and yeah. I love that movie. And I said, I don't get it. I yeah. think it's one of the worst movies I've seen in five years. And I'm a Halloween <laughs> guy and yeah. I didn't like Halloween Terrible. kills. Steph loves it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you hate it? Okay. Yeah. But so, and that's my point here. It's because I'm sitting here listening to you guys talk about like, and in my mind, I'm going, Man, you're really focusing on those little elements that just flew right by me as like enjoyable Star Wars. Yeah. It mm. just felt like just like, yeah, like there there is whimsy in Star Wars that like, you know, the prequels were, you know, dissected, uh, like torn apart, ruined my childhood, right. yada, right. yada, 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 yada. Right. Now people are saying that they're the greatest things yada, ever. Yada, and you yada, don't yada, know. Yada, and now yada, it's yada, like, yada. It, it's like now they're putting the sequels Against the prequels and going, well, the prequels are so much better because George Lucas had a plan and this, and he did have a right. plan, and I get that story wise for story sure. wise, yes. But I think this is why I go back to it, like, and I and what we said at the end of all this for the rewatch in general is that we're not going to rank these movies as far as like best films, right? We're going to talk right. about as far as enjoyable, and yeah. what we, so that's one. This one's going to be as no one's going to have to guess it's gonna be ranked very low for me sure. right, as far as enjoyable but shot wise it. we've both agreed it's, it's beautiful stunning. it's gorgeous and that's the thing like so and i think all three of these movies jj included and mm -hmm. and the reason why and i'm and i say this again blue in the face but i'm just not going to assume that everybody watched the rest of them so i want to repeat the point i think all three of these movies are really well made star wars fan films and i think that the reason why once again is because of what favreau says to me it looked like this movie is what Ryan Johnson believes Star Wars is, right? Mm -hmm. This is his version of Star Wars. J.J. Mm -hmm. Abrams, 7 and 9, those are his versions of Star Wars. Mm -hmm. They did not make the movies that the movies that inspired Star Wars. There's no trace of Kurosawa to me in any of these. There's no trace of the, the, the Western side of it. There's no trace of this stuff that inspired Star Wars and the, uh, the homage to the stuff that started Star Wars. This, these are... This is what I loved about Star Wars, and this is my version of what I want to make for Star Wars. And I don't, I don't really think there's much of an argument against it. Maybe, maybe, maybe you can, but I, I think that that's what I think that's the reason why we ran into this problem. And I think Kathleen Kennedy said, "Yeah, make your version of Star Wars." Mm -hmm. And then when they all sat back and listened to it, and you hear Favreau talk about it, we don't want to make our version of Star Wars. We want to make the things that inspired Star Wars. Right. And I think that's why Mandalorian. And I think, and I think that that's why Obi Wan's going to be incredible because. Deborah Chow is under that same philosophy of yep. doing taking all those different things in the Western. I can't wait to see this trailer. Oh, by the way, before we get into anything else, Rise of Skywalker, and I didn't tell you this yet, will not be next week because the Disney Plus Day is dropping. Oh, yeah. And they're going to drop. I'm taking the whole day and just, you know, probably, I don't know what you're doing that day. So if you're available, Steph, to, to come by and you want to watch the trailers with me and stuff, and but if you have a full day, I'm going to do an episode of Sith Council that day, whether it's by myself or with Steph. Uh -huh. um, so there's no Rise of Skywalker next week. It'll probably be the following, just so everybody knows. But Rise, so sorry, I was so as I was saying with the homage stuff. I don't know if you have any counter to that. I mean, no, I, I that that makes sense to me. It really does, and uh, and you know, if I'm trying to be you know impartial and and talk about it in ways that it affected me, you know, yeah. we're talking yeah. about Last Jedi, um, but I see that. I see that The Force Awakens was a loving kind of, re, you know, it was like a new hope repackaged kind yeah. of. Mm -hmm. it, had, it followed some same beats. It had the look. It had the feel. It had the, the hero's journey with Rey, who's like looking up into the stars yeah. like Luke was doing. And I, and I thought that that was a really good welcome back party for Star Wars fans. Last Jedi made me think on a whole different level, which we'll get into in Luke in a little bit. But I that, that tracks for me when it... it what we see in the Mandalorian right now, maybe we'll see with Book of Boba Fett feels that way. Yeah. Obi Wan Kenobi, the the yeah. the crew that's headlining and and heading up this the Star Wars streaming series really do feel like they have a handle on the inspirations behind it. I mean, right. the the episode with Ahsoka in the Mandalorian, yeah. straight out of a Kurosawa. Yep. You know, a, a Ronin, and she yeah. is a Ronin. Yeah. You know, um, a lot of the Mandalorian, like leading up to it, even the season one premiere when we had. He walks uh, into the bar and he's and he's got, he's that got full spaghetti western. western. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like and that's else. and I get that. And again, we were talking about this with Dune. It's it's an art form to create a movie to tell a story in sure. a way that is that you could eat it and and consume it and feel it and yeah. and understand it. And the sequel trilogy didn't hit those beats that were from the original trilogy but the prequels aren't uh they, they don't feel like there's 
a spaghetti western in there or a Kurosawa. No, I don't movie disagree with you. I think it's it's more sci fi and it's more it's more like it's for kids. That was that was that was way more yeah. kids fairy tale for sure. But the difference is it had the essence of the story itself because if you take the story that George Lucas made inside of those, as you said before, there's a clear plan as far as where they wanted to go from one to three. Now we've talked about this many times: the execution on the script and some of the filmmaking choices and some of the acting choices, not the best, but the story and the core story was there all the way through. That you can take a lot of that stuff of what he wanted to do and then combine it into like the Clone Wars, and it works perfectly. This one is because it's a it's a problem, and it, and I don't blame JJ, I don't blame Ryan Johnson, I just I blame the powers that be that were like, and this this goes back not only to Kathleen Kennedy to Bob Iger who wanted to get the movie out fast and do these movies and get them out in two years, and they didn't write a full format, they didn't attach the directors, they didn't say okay look let's put things together and do this like the end from what you hear behind the scenes whether or not you want to believe it or not from the the, the Luke Skywalker that is set up at the end. Of Force Awakens is not the Luke Skywalker that we get in Last Jedi. He is he because he was supposed to be having he was supposed to be floating. There's supposed to be rocks floating, and mm -hmm. and Ryan Johnson asked JJ to take that out mm -hmm. because JJ didn't want to disconnect him from the Force. Ryan Johnson did. Mm -hmm. um, the then and that's what I'm saying. Like there's so many different times that because the idea and I want to make it clear to me that it wasn't the matter there are a lot of people who go well Luke wouldn't do this Luke wouldn't shut himself off from the force and Luke wouldn't run away because you know this whole thing happened I think that he would however I do think and the way that I felt and I'm going to go back to the thing of like the what if part of it because this is where I was like oh they're setting this up and even seeing it again last night Chewie gets pissed off slams the door throws the thing and he goes Chewie what the hell are you doing here and he goes Han the second he hears about Han, where's Han? Get on that ship and go help your sister. Your sister needs you. Mm. Stop with that. Don't go. Don't be attached to the Force. Fine, but go help your sister. Mm. That's the Luke we know. Luke is no, I don't want to go anymore. It's like at first I get it. Who are you? Why are you here? Leave me alone. Chewie's here. Han's dead. Get your shit together and let's go. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. it seemed like. That's that's the Luke that I that I figured w that we would have seen. And Luke says a couple scenes later, I came here to die. Like, that's how it's like we, we, we've spent so much time years later now with The Last Jedi going, that's not my Luke. That's not my Luke. A lot of people, you know, yeah. and um, for me, the feeling is different. Um, why did Luke go to that island to die? Like, what is that? And we get that kind of the, the, the three different, what do they call it? The Rashomon, uh, the, the, I'm trying to remember what Ryan Johnson called it. Uh, the, when you have the three different stories from three different points yeah. of view and you see and oh. it, uh, uh, unfolds over time. Yeah. doesn't matter. Um, with Luke, he, he went there to die. That's how down in the dumps he really right. is. Even with Han being killed by Kylo Ren, the nephew that, fa that, he, that Luke failed on, right? Yeah, and, the and, and, and helping your sister. Stay there. Okay. I don't even think, I don't think he cares. What, what, I but really right, don't, you, think, but I think he's you're all, right, you're all right with that he doesn't care about that? He's do, he does care, but he went for a specific reason. He didn't want to see it happen again. Right. And but it's it, happening but, again. Right. And mm -hmm. so she tells us that, so there's a couple different times. So that, so I was a little forgiving of it, said, okay, he's not going to go even after Haunt. Then he starts to see that she's training. He's like, I don't want to see this happen again, but she's, and then she's going to leave. And then he goes to, he goes, hand, hand him the saber, pick up the saber, go. Do it, do it, do it. Then no, I can't. You mm -hmm. go. You know, it's not going to end the way you think it is. And but all that disregard. Let's say that all of it. Okay, fine. When he finally, after Yoda has the conversation with him and says, "I love the Yoda." What the I Yoda, love, so the, I love Yoda. the Yoda thing because of I what Yoda, Yoda says to him is very important overall. That can tie in all this, which is, I said, pass on what you have learned. Mm -hmm. and that's everything. That's the mm -hmm. failure. That's all of it. Love that message. Very Yoda. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. And you. And then Luke goes. All right, let's get the X-Wing. Let's move. Yeah, the right? essence of Yoda was definitely yeah. retained. Instead, he goes up. And, and the parlor trick of him going and doing the thing, still to me, I don't see the purpose of him dying. I don't see the purpose of it. I see the idea of him getting exhausted, doing the thing, because when he says, see you around, kid, you end with that. I think this is very similar, and I'll always tie everything back to Rocky. This is very similar to Rocky Five, right? Mm -hmm. No matter what you think about Rocky V and how the, most people think that it's not a great movie, if that movie ends in a boxing ring, right, and against Tommy Gunn and he wins the championship and they shoot it right, people will be a lot more forgiving of Rocky V. <laughs> if Luke goes off, has that same scene, goes, mm -hmm. see you around, kid, 
And then they pick him up, and he's in the next one. And he dies in the last one. I don't think people talk about Last Jedi the same way. Yeah. I think that a redemption. If he didn't die. If he didn't die and he came back and he used that trick to get them the hell out of there, they rendezvous with him, and he's training her up until the third one. And then he, and then he craps out in the third one. I think people are a lot less forgiving because I'm talking about everything. If you kept everything, even the garbage in Canto Bite, if you kept this whole thing together the way it is, except Luke doesn't disappear and they pick him up, I think people wouldn't be as pissed off. It was just, why'd they do it? Well, because. And you've I now killed Han, yeah. you've killed Luke, and then unfortunately, you know, Carrie Fisher, they didn't, they, they, yeah, they that didn't was know. What they know. Yeah. I, I don't, yeah, I, I think maybe for a lot of people that could have been this thing, but for me, that didn't affect me so much because right. it felt like, I loved the last scene we got with him, like the the face off with him and Ben Solo with Kylo is just so sick. Yeah, my p- biggest problem, and I hear your point of view that I do get, he was that low. But usually, when someone's that low, they're not selfish, right? Like, to say that you think all Jedi should not exist, I think it's not in character with um, closing yourself off to the Force. Because that's another step. That's not just closing yourself off to the floor. It's like, I can't have it, so none of you can have it. Right. And that's not Luke to me. Well, he's got the idea, which I understand the philosophy of it. He goes there to study the original Jedi text, and inside mm-hmm. of it, he feels the Jedi were selfish because Sidious took over. They it, And I like that idea when he's like, you feel that? What you feel right now, like it's selfish to say that it's just for the Jedi. Yeah. I like that me idea too. of it. Mm-hmm. But it's just the fact that it's just like Steph's saying, he's just such a like, you know, because of one thing that happened, he just gave up. And it's like, he, he's, she says to him, you are the guy that defeated, defeated Vader and took him away. He's like, yeah, and I'm a legend, the legend of Luke Skywalker. It's like, oh, dude, what are you doing? God, that doesn't land with me. It's like, doesn't to, land with th- me either. to think that <laughs> Luke went what... What he went through to get to the end of Return of the Jedi, right? Yeah. He throws the lightsaber away to basically look at the Emperor and go, I'm not going to turn to the dark side. You're going to have to kill me. And the Emperor's like, fine, I'm going to kill you. And that's what gets Vader, right? And that's what turns him back to An- Anakin Skywalker. Now, all that hardship, all the, ga- the whole galaxy, a whole planet is gone. Alderaan wiped off the face of existence because of the dark side that was set up in the prequels. The, the, the many Jedi that died, so many things, it happens again with Luke. We can't even, I mean, d- let alone knowing what it's like to wield a laser sword and be a space wizard, we don't know what that's like because it's make-believe. Mm-hmm. But when you add, when you go into story and you consider the millions, the billions of people that died from the dark side and Alderaan, yep. the Jedi Council being wiped out because of Palpatine, and then you see your nephew, that's going to do it all again. And he has that vision and he sees Snoke and he sees, and we know now the Snoke is Emperor. That, that the Emperor is using Snoke. They didn't know that when they did this. No, and that's right. fine. You know? <laughs> that's they fine. didn't. They didn't. <laughs> but I mean, don't you but think, I that, can, think that's a crucial piece of information as far um, as who it is? It really doesn't bother me that much. Really? And I'll tell you why. Because I like it because it is consistent with character with the Emperor. He is a puppet master. He is the one pulling the strings, yes, but, and he was doing it the entire time. Force right, Awakens. But, but Ryan Johnson didn't know that was the Emperor. No. That's, that's the thing. It's just that he did. And. And I didn't realize you told, you mentioned the throne room before, which is a fun scene to watch. God, and, I love that scene so much. It, it's gorgeous. It's one of my favorite it's a great scene. saber battles. Yeah, it it is. It is the, so the, Sith. It is so. I know, bad. But you know what I hate about it's, it. To those, oh there's one God. thing I don't like about mm. it. It's the telegraphed conversation that Snoke has right before he dies. He goes, and now he picks up his. It's like he's like talking like he's like a voiceover. He's like now he picks up his lightsaber and he ignites it it's to David kill his true enemy. Oh my and god! It, you but didn't his like true that? enemy, but like he. But when I he says true enemy, that. we didn't know that it was that that Ray I and mean, Ray wasn't his true. We know we. You're not tricking the audience. We know Ray's not his true enemy. We know that already. Like th- there's certain things that are said inside of it. I don't mind what happens there. I like the idea that he turns it. Kylo fooled Snoke. I know, but it's the it was the dialogue that was there. I think. It, yeah. For some, for the first time, it really landed. Like I told you, as I watched this, things get worse and worse for me. Yeah. But like, I love the idea, and this is again one of the reasons why I think that the way that things in Last Jedi made Force Awakens worse, things in Skywalker make this worse. I love the idea that she says you're gonna turn. Uh, she, you're gonna turn. Luke goes, you ain't gonna turn him, right? And he doesn't turn. It's almost like he's trying to get her to be. The the two Sith. Yeah. Love that idea. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah. Problem is, it's completely negated in in the next movie because then he does the turn. Yeah. And you and like they, if you read the Trevorrow stuff, he wasn't going to turn. He was going to stay evil. Should have kept him down that path. It was my biggest problem with in general of taking him down that road. Loved that choice. Don't turn him back again. We've seen that a million times. Yeah. And that's the one thing you can say, and I will say very positively about this movie, as much as I don't like a lot of the choices, I do commend the ch the choices to try to be different. I don't believe a lot of the different choices worked. Yeah. Um, but I think that trying to be different and maneuvering around it, and I also, controversial thing to say, if they t if so, there's so many people out there that think that Ryan Johnson ruined Star Wars and that Ryan Johnson, Ryan Johnson was okay to make a movie that he wanted to make. He made his version of Star Wars. I don't like the film. A lot of people don't like the film. They said to me, hey, guess what? Why would they say to me? But if they said it in general, <laughs> hey, Ryan Johnson is going to direct an episode of Mandalorian, Obi-Wan. You know what I'd say? Can't wait to see it. Yeah. And when people go, what? Why would you? But well, you hate Last Jedi. You ever seen Breaking Bad? You ever seen Osmondius? Mm -hmm. You ever see uh, the Fly episode? You mm -hmm. ever see some of? You ever see some of the other stuff that he does? See Looper, Can, Looper connecting to Love certain Looper. things. Yeah, Looper's fantastic. Doesn't judge people off of like a particular movie. He was. This was something that he wanted. And and we are in the minority. And even though there's loud voices out there screaming and much, Mark Riley is the majority. This yeah. movie is very highly rated on both the critic yeah. score and the audience, audience score. score. People love this movie. It's one, one of the point three billion dollars. There's so many people that yeah. were looking for this movie, like for not looking for. I think of Tim Sim, not looking forward to us doing this because I think it was just going to be a complete hate fest battle. I'm going to tell you what I don't like about the movie, but I don't yeah. think it's right to say it's like a. To, to say that Ryan Johnson ruined Star Wars. No. That's so stupid. No. Like, ruined Johnson and all that kind of nonsense. Lucas ruined Star Wars I know. It's years ago. It's, it's, it's going to it's be silly. somebody else that ruins Star Wars soon. It takes okay? an entire yeah. team to make a product. Yeah. And it, we're correct. still watching Star Wars, so it's not ruined. It's not ruined, right. Yeah. I mean, what are they going to think when Taika Waititi comes out there and makes his movie that's going to be just off-the-wall bonkers? Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay? I mean, there's going to be a, a Wookiee sitting in a rocking chair carving a pumpkin. So and, and everybody's going to get you ruined star wars well, Koi, like Koi had a great point yesterday mm -hmm. i was talking to Koi off um off screen we were talking about how because he's also he looks the last jedi and it's different with like That's my, my opinion of <laughs> you and him though because like you and i have from jedi council to, when we started hanging out 20 years ago yeah we talk star wars and we talk about yeah, things, yeah. and i know you're i know your true love as far as the way that we dive into star wars is how he dives into comic books. Oh, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Now, he he's a Star Wars. That's, that's not to say take it away from his Star Wars fandom, but, like, he likes it for different reasons, and the reason why he likes it is because it is more like a Battlestar Galactic episode. He likes the different kind of science fiction, the different side of it. But then he was like, you know, but the thing is, for me, I understand your point of view because... For me, like Ragnarok is like his least favorite Thor movie. Oh, right. My it's favorite. my favorite. Yeah. It's my favorite as well. <laughs> my favorite Marvel. Because he thinks it's that it's so three. off yeah. the mark of what Thor is in right. the comic books. I've heard which this. Which I understand. I've heard this. Which um, I understand. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love Thor Ragnarok. It's my favorite as well. But he's like, you know, Thor is more comical. Everyone's kind of got joke. And so I get that side of it. Like, and that's where I come from on this thing. Like, there's just so much happening that is set up from Force Awakens that's negated. And people people talk about how Rise of Skywalker negates a lot of Last Jedi, and it does. And we'll get into that when we do it. This movie does negate a lot of stuff um, that is set up in Force Awakens. It, Finn is a perfect example of that, of, of, of his arc and where he's going to go. The idea of Kathleen Kennedy says whether you want to believe her or not, that since the beginning, they always had an idea of the origin of where Ray, she was going to be connected to someone. Ryan Johnson says, well, that's not true. She's a nobody. Um, I wish I would have stuck with that. I don't. Um, I, I wish it would have been a Kenobi. Uh, personally, I don't think the Skywalker stuff worked or Palpatine worked um, at all. I think that a Kenobi side of it, because then it then ties into Satine, that then ties into this series, and, and then also ties into Mandalorian, if she's also a Mandalorian. I thought that would have been very exciting. But like you said, it's not what happened in the film. Right. Um, but either way, there's there's there was so much in general that I thought worked, some stuff that 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 didn't work. But I was just disappointed overall, just watching a lot of it because I was like, man, like the, the Moz Moz stuff. It didn't it's a video. It's a, like a it's bad a video, video game. game. It's yeah, VR, and I love that character in Force Awakens. So to see her, it's like don't use her if that's gonna be how it is. Right. I think like a lot of my biggest issue when I really look at the film as a whole is that I feel like the setups of the characters were all made for a punchline at the end. 
And to me, the punchline didn't outweigh the setups that were used. But I will say, I did really enjoy the third act. Like, I will say Finn, when he takes out Phasma, is the only point in the film where I think his character elevates. Talk about a wasted Mm -hmm. character, though. Yeah, yeah, Phasma, yeah, completely. But at least for Finn, he got one cool moment. But you want to talk about bad dialogue? You're always scum. Rebel scum. (laughs) What? Star Wars, man. Dude, I just want to put that, my fist through this yeah, beautiful, but, but, lousy planet. Star Wars. No, that that line on. got me too. Yeah, that line come was on. like. I mean, like I get it when the when the cheesy emperor, you rebel scum. Yeah, like that's that's serialized stuff that George. I, I get it, but this this was like, well, no, we know that we always talk about, we always quote the rebel scum. So scum, mm. rebel scum. I accept it now. Mm-hmm. That's who I am now. It's yeah. like you, you accepted that in The Force Awakens. And <laughs> and at the end of Force that's Awakens. That's true. And the that's other true. thing that I can't stand is, hey, I'm Poe. Hey, I'm Ray. Yeah, I know. We were, stood ne- we were standing next to each other in The Force Awakens. No, there was the, so At the end much. of the movie, we're standing right <laughs> next to each other, and we're talking about finding Luke in the map. Remember me? Yeah, but I was standing. Go back and screenshot it. I'm standing right next to you. I feel like filmmakers want to make every female male section kind of sexualized in mm. a little bit of a way. And so like the whole time, that's part of my problem with the trilogy, this trilogy in particular is that I'm like, who are you trying to set up romantically? Who is a partnership? Right. That's what I thought who was is, happening. Yeah. There. Right. It's, it's, it's weird. Yeah. And it's a lot of weird. Stuff. And the other thing I like BB-8 a lot. Love him. Why is he fighting? Why is he maneuvering an 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 ad ad or whatever or a mini one? What, what, oh. I mean, and even even Finn's like, huh? Like he's maneuvering it with the wires. He's hot wired the thing. There's some goofy stuff going on in this movie. You don't think kids love that part? He probably did. Yeah, but that's but, why it's but, there. But here's here's the thing. That's my point with when like cramming in and trying to be fun, right? Like to me, to me, it's like you have this whole weird tone throughout the entire movie, and then. BB-8 is that well we have we well it's a little too serious let's have BBA do the the ad at right, or whatever this thing is right let's have him do that and then that whole scene with with DJ and BB-8 you know when BBA comes out and he's firing the coins and knocking people out like three stooges movies and he's going hits the guy with the shoe it's like <laughs> it's it's I love the ever loving you know what of you, that you like are you like the candle bite stuff no candle bite I think does not work um for pacing and story Okay, because we're literally taken out, ripped out of like this really great, you know, Battlestar Galactica flavored. um, You know, they find the the, we have them on a string. We know how to get them through uh, light speed. But now we're going to go over here. Yeah. What's your story, Roundy? What's that? What's your story, Roundy? Roundy. Roundy. (laughs) Oh, right, right, right. right. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Riley Roundy. Yeah, I love it. Riley Riley Roundy. Riley Roundy. I like it. See, but that that the dialogue doesn't bother me so okay. and it's again i'm sitting here listening to this and it's like i go i, I i'm not going to be able to change your mind i'm not going to be able to and i see right and i and i and i see the little what you're calling it's like this doesn't make sense to me this is not consistent in the story this doesn't make and it's so like you just that, want, you you, I, you, you I, legit I, I, went like this yeah like, like look that's what i did yeah. with the rise of skywalker yeah yeah, yeah. And, and i totally some, feel what you're saying like i yes, there's I some movies you. i can and i think christian and i feel the same on this I can push past problems if I'm having fun. Rise of Skywalker, I was having fun. Yeah, this it's like so in my face that I'm noticing it that it's hard. But I do acknowledge there are great things in the film. Yeah, and that's and it's again, it's all subjective. I think that's the point. I think you had a lot of fun with this movie. I love this movie because there was something about the character of Luke Skywalker. When I walked out of that movie, Mm -hmm. I had to go by be by myself. I literally was like staring off into the distance. I'm like. What that much like your your reaction was like? I need to sit on this. When I went home, hanging in my bedroom are the original three posters. Yeah, and in the one in front of me was a New Hope, and Luke Skywalker's on the poster, and he's with Leia, and he's swinging across, and there's there's Vader up here, and it's the the Drew Struz and great old poster, and I stared at Luke the entire night. <laughs> Yeah. I could not sleep. I was so affected by it. Yeah, it was really, and it truly was the the heart of it for me was that conversation with Yoda. You know, I love that scene. And no, and I, I know yeah, a lot of yeah. people do and yeah. and, the, and the the nostalgia feels. Although he does you know. try to blow him up with lightning. Yeah. Then well that's Yoda's <laughs> that was all, sick. Yoda's <laughs> he's, always and doing he's, it. And he's laughing. And he's that loving song. it. I I don't mind this. But that but that Yoda. really got to me because it's like it really put into perspective that what it must be like when Luke Skywalker takes out the whole empire. 
right? And he becomes the legend of Luke Skywalker. Yeah. And then he has to go continue to build, pass on what you have learned. So he starts doing that. You see we even the, see that with Grogu the, now well, in Mandalorian. Well, that, that was the thing is that I think that like the the – as Steph said before, where there was a lot of that sentiment of, or maybe you did, Mark, where, where that's not my Luke Skywalker thing, right? Sure. That sentiment. I think that, whether it's ever going to be admitted or not, I think that version of Luke that we saw in Mandalorian, that's what people wanted to see, right? Yeah, After Return did. of the Jedi. So it's like, you know that, that that thing you wanted to see from Luke? There you go, right? And that's, and that's what you get. But eventually we know that he goes from there to there. Mm. Right, uh, yeah. unless they decide to do a, a what if, and that's a multiverse, and Last Jedi is part of the. Oh, they'll, let, they'll lose me. <laughs> they'll never. They'll, they'll, <laughs> they will they'll, never they'll, do that. They'll, but they'll, they'll never do that. No. And then, nor, but nor, it's a big, nor should, nor should no. they, But they'll they'll never do that. So it's a huge sandbox now, though. Right, we can go back. We can start filling in some gaps. We have the technology available to us. I have. I, I believe Luke Skywalker will be a part of Mandalorian or Book of Boba Fett or something again. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how. They're maybe gonna, they're well, going to do. A, I think they'll do a, a series, maybe some someday. Series? Maybe it's a movie. I don't know. I well, think this that there's fake stuff that got going on now. It's probably very possible. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. We don't know. Yeah, but even then, when he walks into the Mandalorian, everything it just keeps filling in some blanks of these movies. Right. Like it just keeps making me go, "Oh my god!" Because when you look at what Luke Skywalker did in the Mandalorian, and then you consider the Last Jedi. That's what I think. I feel like works the last. For you. What, yeah, it works. Oh, it one hundred percent works because yeah. I just I'm connected to story. I'm connected to character, and it makes me question. It makes me go, why? But let me ask why you did Luke do this? No, I get it. But let me ask you something else that goes back to what I was talking about. How I think that this movie and all three of these movies, well, the first movie, The Force Awakens, just cuts and pastes a lot from New Hope and other things. It bothered me less when it was. Um, when it first came out, mm -hmm. bothers me more now because mm -hmm. again, no plan. But the second one and the third one, well, eight and nine, they both negate other things, right? So one of the big things that I think is negated is that at the end of because we, we have established from Return of the Jedi that the rebellion has taken over, the New Republic is is in control, mm -hmm. right? Now, it's not set up very well in the Force Awakens at all about New Republic and how many people are taken out and all that. We know from the novels that a majority of the 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 government was taken out and cradle they, of leadership taken out. They take right? out a lot of people, right? But the the philosophy and the religion and uh, philosophy and the politics of, of the, the New Republic is is still there. We we think, but it's and there's a lot of soldiers that are still left. They they blew up like four planets. Mm. There's hundreds of planets, thousands of planets that are still part of the New Republic. At least sure what we thought. So they blow up Star Killer Base, but yet they're still on the run in Last Jedi. Why? Why are they on the run again? And there's only a handful of them in the resistance. We're, we're, there's no one else. And then they're like, well, we send out this beacon and no one else wants to help us. Why? Like it, this government has, ne this, this isn't during the rebellion. The empire has been set up for years now, years yeah. upon years. So they're, they've been building out and whether or not you, you want to take the deleted scene as canon from Revenge of the Sith, Mon Mothma and Padme and, and Bail Organa, they're all planning on this thing that we got to start talking about this now. And it built, it built, it built, it built. So the First Order comes back. We don't necessarily know when they came back. That wasn't set up very well. The way that Force Awakens sets it up, it's just they're the new empire. And it's, the, it's again, it's the, this is the way it used to be when we all were kids. There's Stormtroopers again. There's this. And this is what a lot of stuff I think Force Awakens did poorly or just like mm, yeah. the same stuff i wanted more politics i wanted more all, like what's going on with the government all of that. You know? but they blow up this planet this major weapon yeah it, the, not the death star a planet yeah and yet did, didn't affect the first order at all and they have by the way this major fleet apparently that mm -hmm. snoke's got first of all why they need why they need that big planet if they have this big fleet that's just waiting the, the Sith yeah, fleet it's because it, that's straight out it's like the echoes in star wars know, it but is but what it, gets me but it's, it's same with empire it's like they blow up the death star yeah. and we know it's set up yeah it's, it's set up better but as a kid i remember this as a kid i go watching empire strikes back i go there's more of them like i like it was that innocence right there or i'm like what there? and that's just again it's like how it lands on you is, is fascinating to but wait me no no no, just, no but the empire is already in control co correct i know that the, the new, what the, i felt like with the force awakens and what the the first order did was basically yeah. a coup 
they took over the government. They were established. They were probably had more. And this is a little bit. Well, you're probably David a chasing it right now. Yeah, well, it's probably a little head in yeah, my own, right? Because it's not explained. Right. So I'm filling in some blanks of my own to make it work. But I don't even need to do that. It's like it's it has the same flavor of Empire where. Star Killer base is taken out. Yep, it's a big planet. Yep, all that. Of course, they would have fleets. No, but that's but that's different though. That's different though because the the, the Empire was in control and had of the entire fleet. They, right. they really were, and they were established for at that point in Empire what 20, 30 years or whatnot. Sure. The Republic had a bunch of ships, had other things like just taken out. They because they don't establish it enough that those planets had everything. Like, mm-hmm. is that where all of the Republic, New Republic fleets were? Like, we're, we're talking years upon so years. So you're looking for, wh- where's the, the rest of the people the to come the help? Yeah. St- uh, re- Republican. Where's the rest of the Republic <laughs> stuff, right? Where's the rest Where's the rest of it? Like, it's like, they don't even, they don't bring mention to it. They're on the run again, and it's just this little pocket again. And then after, this is all that's left. Why? Mm-hmm. Like, there's no explanation of it. And this isn't just a last year. kind of get in Rise of Skywalker. It kind of goes know, back to, it's, it's like, you know, what the fear led in it through the galaxy. It was like a coup taking over. The, the the First Order, to me, feels like a terrorist organization, you know? Right. Where the Empire was... building out in the, in the unknown regions. Unknown regions. You know, they're, 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 they're getting ready to make their plan of attack. They do it. They, uh, they take out the cradle of leadership of the Republic, whether or not there are a bunch of fleets there or whatnot, but nobody's coming to help them because of the fear and that which is the echo of star wars and you know fear is leads to the dark side and we have kylo ren at the center of it leading the charge i nobody wants to help because I, I what know, the first but, order did I, but that's the thing it wasn't established enough and this is again not a last jedi problem this is a this is a, the new trilogy problem mm. it wasn't established enough of where did they come from Right, I would have what loved it, to know that well, yeah i mean it's like well if you go back and you read the book and you know it i don't want to read the book for this like after mass yeah. sets it up and I get it. And I read some of the book stuff, but I, I'm talking about as people who are just coming to see it the first time. And you're trying to explain this to people. How did they all get here? How did all this stuff happen? They set up at one point in Force Awakens that Snoke had, had corrupted Kylo at one point. Why? Who is he? What's like? Like, there was none of that, and it was just like, well, I'm telling my version of this. JJ's like, I'm telling my version. Then Colin Trevorrow was like, I'm going to do what you guys did, and I'll take out everything that you did. And all right, well, that makes sense. And this is you have to, when you read that treatment, it ties in what those whether you like it or not. Which it, one? The Colin Trevorrow's. I love that script because yeah. it connects the two movies. It's Correct. the only one out of all these movies. JJ doesn't connect to eight. He nope. just basically just says, "Nah, I'm going to connect to seven. And Ryan Johnson goes, "I'll take some of the stuff you, JJ, but I'm going to go this way with it." They both aren't paying attention to each other's stuff, and and I don't care. There's going to be tons of people. Well, no, actually, Ryan Johnson did combine. He took some things, but then he went his own way with it because there was not. J.J. Uh, Abrams did not want Ray to be a nobody, whether you like it or not. Didn't want to go there. The lightsaber throw, by the way, which you brought up before. Mm. People hate the lightsaber throw itself. Yeah, I don't hate the lightsaber throw. I hate the execution of the lightsaber throw. Mm. It's done for comedy. Yeah. Yeah. It's like if he's got the saber, he looks at it, and then he just tosses it to the side, like disregards it. Then you get this is a Luke who's disregarded a lot of stuff, not the eh, over the shoulder. And even this. Point. See, this is why it's even this. It's so funny so to me. Mark Again, I'm, I'm sitting and listening here, and I know there's going to be some people out there. and um, who You're going to have a lot of people on your side. And, I, and I'm sure I will. And, and it's it's not about that. It's, it's how it lands on me. It's like I'm sitting here literally going, really? Really, it's fascinating to me that that landed with you because it's such, I mean, Luke begins Ray's training with that lightsaber throw. Whether he believes it or not, yeah. he goes, this does not make the Jedi. This, get that out of your head. She thinks everything, the legend of Luke Skywalker tied to a lightsaber, bring it to him. He's going to get all excited and come join the cause. This does not make you. He even threw it down in Return of the Jedi. That was a absolute, like, when you want to make a point, when you want to absolutely drive something home, that's what that was Luke for me. Luke was an it emotional just, character from the second we met him oh, to the end of Jedi. He sees all this the way thing to the. Took, it was This thing started his adventure. He hasn't seen it since his hand got cut off, at least what we think anyway, but that's a you story. You think a Jedi is tied to that? For his father and the, and the, and the, the, the yeah, and he, I, well, he he's has, not a Jedi he, anymore. Yeah. He's tied to emotion. He's tied to emotion. I think he absolutely would, would respond to it. But like you said, it's what happened in the movie. It is what it is, but it just, like, I, I it didn't land for me. And, yeah. when, and when he throws it, I'm going, 
It's done for a laugh. It was the movie, the the part of the movie. Oh, it's it so it's much. done for a laugh. Like I remember, like just it's it's just comedic timing. It's like slow music goes down. Ha ha, that's funny. As opposed to why is he throwing it? Like if he just goes and tosses it to the side, going to exactly your same point of beginning the training. Mm. It to me is more because like you said, throwing and saying this doesn't mean anything. Right. You can do that by just going. Yeah, absolutely. Or you can make a real big point of it. Which and bend, that's where and, I got, and that, go, but that's how it landed on me. <laughs> and then and shake yeah. your shake your hands and get a laugh. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there's anything else as far as where. I mean, I thought I really like Holdo. Oh God, I like Holdo a lot. Like uh, and the Holdo and maneuver is one the, of the greatest. It's a great shot. And I remember how people foreshadowed gasped. with uh, uh, Leia Poppins going through the hologram of oh, the Oh, we didn't talk about that. Yeah, we I have, love. Thank you. Wow. I'm so glad I brought it. Up. I don't mind it. I despise it. I cried in the theater. It it was something Why isn't I she dead. She's in space and she's freezing. She's not superhuman. She went. That was my problem. I think like it should have been locked like in inside again, of the ship. It's like I'm like you know she should be dead. I don't mind that it was that she did it because I I like I liked finally seeing Leia use the force. Yes, right. I like that she used the force. But she was like a hundred yards out. Yes. I don't think she needed to be a hundred yards out. That's really nitpicky, but because I don't mind it. But that was. A long but again, journey. Like, and I, and I, ha- I know you, you're getting. I know you're getting mad about the what if side of it. But like, if if it, that's. I mean, that's but it, but what it, seems like all the talk is. I know. It's like, oh, it, what if it was this? What because, if it was that? It, I'm just because, like, because you're you missing know, some great Star Wars here. But I, see, but I don't think it is. I yeah. think that the whole point of that is that the fact that they're setting up these great moments, like Steph said, I'm all for seeing Leia yeah. use the Force, right? But at what expense? To where she's almost supernatural, and they bitch Akbar. Who has been this character people love? The one, the one, and then he's dead. Um, and he's just dead, and, it, nice. and and it's a throwaway. It's not even emotional. It's like, oh yeah, by the way, Leia survived, but everybody else, Akbar, he's dead. Moving on. And so, if they with like the same type of scene, if Leia is in this room where there's like a hole in the ship, and everybody's been sucked out of it, and she's almost to the fact where she's going to get sucked out of it, and she's got to use the force somehow to get herself back, close up that hole in the thing. It's more effective than her floating in space, freezing. She's not supernatural. She's a human being. She just knows how to use the force. She's supernatural all of a sudden. Well, how is she able to? She's not a droid. How is she able? It's like that scene in what's it, Guardians, when when Star Lord's out there. Oh yeah. He's not. He's, she's not supernatural. She's a human been, being. He was out there for a while too, but he had a thing on his face. He had, and gave it to over to uh, you know what's her name. But he. <laughs> but he's, remember. But he's Gamora. half. A, but thank you. You know what? He's half a god. Yeah, that's she true. is not. She's yeah. a human being. She's a Jedi. She's a human. But right. But even Luke says it. Your own guy in this movie says that it's not a matter. It's just connecting to the force doesn't give you superpowers. It just allows you to connect to the energy. And yeah. she's out there doing this thing, flying through space. God, I thought I it was it. asinine. I love it so much. <laughs> I love it so much. I mean, I can head cannon it all day. Yeah. I mean, again, it's like the things that land with certain people you know, land with me differently. I mean, I, it didn't work in the, in the press screening that I saw with the last Jedi. I was the only one that made a noise of that thing. And I let, and everybody looked at me like I was losing my mind because I, I did, I was like, Oh my God, the, the music that they're playing. I mean, the fact that I John, love the, music. the music was amazing. I and mean, the fact that John Williams is like the, the movie opens with a flutter of new hope when, you know, the dee, 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 dee. Leia's escaping in A New Hope. Leia's escaping in The Last Jedi. The same deal. Yeah. It's like, that's why that, that refrain was played. But this, this the, the, the Leia Poppins, it's just like, again, it's Luke Skywalker says it. Space wizards. Laser swords. This kind of idea that, like, we are in a movie. We are in a fairy tale. A long time ago is once upon a time. And that's why it doesn't land with me the way it's landing. I mean, I feel like there's this thing about The Last Jedi now that whether, like, so talking to you guys, I get it. I see your points. It's like, I, I can't, you know, right. it's like, that's how it lands with you. But I feel like there is something that this generation is like looking at the last Jedi as a, as a kind of, it became tribal. It became this thing where the last Jedi is this. And it's like every nitpick in the world is happening. And I'm like, wow, I get but it. See, it's I like, I am, I am just enjoying the hell out and, of this. And at, at, as you should. Right. But I yeah. don't think, I don't think that asking a question of how she's surviving in space is nitpicky when they haven't established the rules when they when they have established the rules in seven previous films or even including rogue one and solo nine previous films whatever it was whatever whatever the hell it was um they they never once like obi-wan if you threw him out in space he would freeze to death 
Mm. And Luke, when he's trying, like, what would so now in today in, in Ryan Johnson's version of Empire Strikes Back, if Luke falls off that thing, can he catch himself in space? And can he? Can he? Can he? You know, well, she's anchored to the ship. That's what she's using I know, the force. She's ship. able to do it, but can he anchor himself to to Bespin? Then is he able to, to not the, that loud? He'd fall to his death because he's. But, he, if he, but if he was able to, like that's that's my point. Is like so. What at, at what point? What what are the Jedi able to do? Like floating through space and being able to like, it's a it's one thing to be in a position where she's still be a human being and she's using all these force things to close the hole and it took it took all this out of her. But to be floating around in space and then fly back into the thing, it just seemed more like a superhero film than it did mm. than it did a, a Jedi to me. And it's even one of the problems I have with some of the prequel stuff. It's yeah. like when they're doing like these super jumps and, and see all that's where I, I, I got the prequel flavor from it. I tell you, you know the yeah. first thing I thought of gas, and they went and they held their breath. The Jedi, yeah. that's like it just. I went. But she held her breath. Holding your breath for gas and floating around in space. Yeah, she held her breath. Things. Used the force. Got in there. Almost killed her. But I mean, that's that. It just Dude. that's it went yeah, right through me like that. It, but she she was she had icicles hanging off her face. Yeah, but like, if she's if she is silent and holding her breath, Jedi just being full master Jedi because she is, and she held holds her breath and she's. I mean, she has very little time. Well, I wish she would have saved Akbar. Yeah. Well. She could, could have, have saved Akbar. Brought a, Akbar. Again, it's like, that's funny because for me, that's war. Money to bud. That's, I mean, it's like, why do we need to send off for Akbar? Because he's, he's a fun meme now. I mean, it's oh, like, you know, the, the, the return of the Jedi became a thing. I mean, it's like, yeah. I was part of the la, uh, uh, the Star Wars trilogy in 30 minutes, right? Mm, great and series. when Michael Cornaccia, the great Michael Cornaccia plays Admiral Akbar wearing a piece of fabric found on the ground and he says it's a trap everybody loses their mind in the audience because it's become this iconic it's a thing famous line. My daughter, it's a famous my, my, line right 10 year old recently was just like she's like that's a famous line yeah and again <laughs> because it becomes part of the the, the zeitgeist yeah. it becomes this thing that we start talking about and we talk about really akbar akbar had three lines he's in, in, in I love the, the design Boba of the Fett, character, though, man. Boba Fett got his own series, you know. It's like Boba Fett Akbar, got, yeah. Boba Akbar, Fett got his own Akbar series. Also carries along, and the same thing, you know, where I said that it, with whether it's the, it was enough so where there is stuff worth him in comic books and books and everything. Oh yeah, right? there is stuff. You can he's fill de- in all these developed, characters. But he's with developed the, enough in the third in Return of the Jedi. He's got a more of a significant part than I think you're giving him credit for in Return of the Jedi. Like he's, he's, he's got a big part in Return of the Jedi. Massive part. So it's like I'm not telling you that they have to do this massive send off, but at least you know you see the guy. He's there, and he and he, whether he it's tragic. Oh wow, he's give him like, give us an attachment to him. He's like some woman I don't even really know says, "Oh yeah, Leia survived, but Akbar, the rest of our leadership, dead. Yeah. Akbar's gone. You didn't even get this. Maybe, maybe inside of that same scene, it's just Akbar and Leia, and Akbar goes flying out the thing. You're like, oh no, Akbar. And then you're like, is Leia gonna eat it too? And then Leia saves herself. Yeah. You know, it's uh, like, yeah. yeah, are we all making our own kind of fiction out of it? Maybe so, but I'm the stuff that you're enjoying, that you like it as it is, I'm trying to say look, I would have probably enjoyed it more so yeah. if it was like this because there's so many times in that Luke storyline that I'm like, oh, they set it up and they go there, they're going that way? No, they went that way. Oh, they're going that way? Oh, they went that way. And it's just a letdown, letdown to you. It's delivering every time they're, they're throwing the pitch. You know, it's, I mean, Cannabite doesn't deliver for me. I yeah. do feel it's, it's hard it's, to watch. It's hard to watch. It t- again, but it's because a story for me, it takes it, it takes you right out of the yeah. action. And it is kind of for kids. But I, what I appreciate about Cannabite is I love the idea that it's like, you saw the scum and villainy. Now you're going to see the rich. Yeah. Now you're going to see the, the, you know, the, the, the high society in the Star Wars universe. Yeah. They're on a cruise ship, for God's sake. Do you see my point there where it looks more like Fifth Element than it does Star it Wars? Do, it feels Fifth Element. Yeah. It absolutely does. It has that flavor to it. But again, it, it's like, it feels completely Star Wars to me too, though. You know, it, it feels that way. It comes in and you're like, ooh, this is how the other half lives. I like that idea. I love it. And then it's, you know, you have the kids enjoying the hell out of yourself because you got all the, you know, sparkly aliens with a BB-8 and, you know, is the pinball I wonder, machine I wanna, or whatever. I want to show, I, I, my oldest has seen the movie. I don't remember how she was. I remember because my, my, both my oldest and my wife really liked the movie. Yeah. I think casual fans really like this movie for sure. And I'm curious, though, if I go back and watch. No, you know what? I'm going to take that back. My wife loved this movie. Mm. My 10-year-old was bored with it yeah. when I saw it. Yeah. And and I don't remember, though, if she liked that scene. Yeah. But she was bored with the majority of the movie. We didn't. She wasn't 10 when she watched, though. She was probably like 7 when she it's saw it. It's so a heady Star Wars movie. I want to see. But but my daughter's my daughter's heady. She likes, yeah. She, yeah, she she likes, to, she likes to think when she's watching movies. But it's just, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's just 
besides that scene where they're trying to make fun, the movie's just not fun. Like, what about the Porgs? I don't realize until last night, I hate the freaking Porgs. <laughs> I thought I used to like them. I hate them. I can't stand those. I want to chew to eat all of them. When, when I, I thought at one point that I was like, the, the, it's like, give me the Ewoks. Put the Ewoks there. All the other, when Ewoks are petting the hair, I'm like, that's fine. These things, Chewie, ch- bite his face right now. Just bite that thing's face. Why is it in the cockpit with you? Yeah. Put it in the roaster and eat it. Home. Stupid. It's the porgs. I, those porgs are terrible. Uh. And, I, and, 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 and I'm, as I'm watching it last night, I'm not going to lie to you. I was wishing for an alternate cut with a lightsaber did go through its head. And I know. I know there was. Um, I know there was somebody that actually was, did that. And Well, yeah, but there's also, I think, um, some pre-production material that it actually shows it. Oh, really? That it was going to maybe do that. They, but should, they probably, probably couldn't have done it. Yeah. But, but either way, like, it, it, and, and Chewie, Chewie's kind of put in the back oh, for the most part in this movie, too. Really? You don't think so? What's yeah. he do besides eating porgs and flying the ship at the end? Yeah, I, I mean, he's there for Ray. I'm yeah. I really enjoyed the, the relationship, like, especially it's, it's like, rewatching that yesterday. I sat down at about 8 a.m. and I watched it until 10. I, I mean, I, I just finished it right away. And Chewie coming in at that moment when he says, where's Han? And, he, yeah. and Chewie comes in, like, guns blazing, you know, yeah. throwing the door. That felt like perfect yeah it felt I, perfect I like, for me. I, I, what I, I, we got of chewy i liked yeah there just wasn't a lot which i didn't really need that much because i think on it was ray's story then and it really we needed what what we got from ray i i what i do my favorite part of the whole movie i would say my what besides the yoda scene is the r2 scene it's the mm-hmm. most luke that i saw in the entire movie is when he's sitting there in the falcon yeah you know what r2 wakes up and he goes R2? And yeah. I was like, oh, it's Luke. Where, where's he been? Oh, yeah. And then he, he should. Like, the that's up. the point. Yeah. That, no, was, yeah, that but, is the point. But come on back, me. brother. My come God. On back. Don't go back into that the cave. That is he goes absolutely back into the, the cave. point. He sees R2D2. He comes Luke and again. He goes cheap, and he goes cheap, cheap shot cheap with, shot, yeah, with right. the, you know, help me, Obi Wan Kenobi. And then he goes back into but the nonsense. This isn't your Luke. This isn't your Obi Wan. This isn't your situation where you got to go hide on a planet or overwatch, you know, watch one of the twins to make sure that Vader doesn't get him all this stuff. This is Luke deciding to go and hide on that planet. I know, but then all of his buddies... And why is that? Know, everything comes back, and then they... But this is the reason why I think that... The, one of the main reasons I have that such a problem with it, and again, it's more so the leadership of, of Lucasfilm than it is Ryan Johnson, because he was said, I, this is what I want to do, and instead of a Kevin Feige thing going, well, no, we, we, we can't do that. Don't, don't do that, because it doesn't tie in. They went, yeah, go ahead and do it. In The Force Awakens, they set up this big thing that Luke is the key. Looks the key to everything. Like, and again, knowing what J.J. Abrams was setting up, and knowing, you know, behind the scenes talk, the idea was this was all legit. There was there was no there was no thing where J.J. Abrams was going to make Luke this hermit attached to the force. He wanted him to train. train I, I don't think J.J. knew what he was. I mean, J.J. is it the was king con- of setting everything up. I and don't f- disagree with you, but the conversation was it was not set up for him to be this hermit. He was playing. He was still connected to the forest. He was looking for the Jedi text, and it's set up as much that he had to go at. Han says as much in The Force Awakens. He was he, he was really thrown off by his student messing, you know, screwing around on, or turning on him. So he left to go check out the Jedi text and go to and trying to discover himself more, right? So and even they say finding Luke Skywalker the key to it. It makes The Force Awakens obsolete because Luke was the MacGuffin in The Force Awakens. I didn't know, but they find they find Luke. It makes me it makes me dislike part the the, last, the Force Awakens more because like they don't utilize him at all. He shows up at the very end of the movie. Mark Hamill famously talks about how he's in it for like two seconds, and he's just like, yeah. and when you know, when you hear Mark Hamill not happy with with the way that his character played out at all in in these movies. Well, I think you know, as an actor, you want to get more screen time. But and he has a lot of screen time in yeah. Last Jedi. He, it's, it, it's his movie. But he doesn't like it. No, I know. <laughs> That's fine. I think it was some of his best acting. It was. I don't disagree with that. It was. I don't disagree with that. It was incredible, and yeah. that and that's the that's where I keep going back to Luke. I mean, it's like I, I like even watching the Last Jedi yesterday for the probably fifteenth time. God bless you. I, do I I again I go why you know I'm I'm sitting there watching Luke and it's just so complex you can't just say oh he did it because of this he did it because of that there are so many reasons he put himself on the island took himself out of the force that it's like it still boggles my mind yeah. it's still making me question you know and and savor his his moments right. and you know the fact that he did t- pull himself out of the forest is fascinating to me when you consider the juxtaposition of luke skywalker the hero that we all know the myth now has become the legend and he's like he crumbled under that weight 
Yeah. And we go to Yoga, Yoda and what he said. It's like always impatient. I mean, he's he's the one that's running off an empire to go get. He's yeah. going to get himself killed if he doesn't get his no, friends the Yoda, killed. Yoda, the Yoda stuff t- ties back, and that in. it always ties back. Luke is always well, looking to the future, the, the horizon, and he did it with Kylo Ren. Yeah. He did it by losing Ben Solo. He was t- impatient. He let it get to him, and it weighed on him. And that is a fascinating thing to watch your hero fail. You know, yeah, I look, that ah, that, well, that gave me permission to just like. One day you're gonna have a great day. You're gonna you're gonna do everything right. You're gonna feel good. You're gonna save the universe in your head, right? And then the next day, maybe it's because of, of whatever reason, you fail again. It gave me permission. That's why I, I looked at the poster of Luke again. Yeah. That's why when I came out of the Last Jedi, I had to I have a moment because I'm like, I feel like I have permission now again to to fail, and that's okay. Hey, hey, and that's and but you make a great point there. It's a matter of how you connect. Right. Correct. That's, that's any movie. That's why any single time when somebody writes back, I don't remember what movie it was recently. Like, oh, you're so wrong for liking this movie. It's like you can't be wrong for liking. You can't. This movie. I, I, you can't I, be I, wrong for connecting no. to me because you don't live my life. You don't live the way that I have experienced things. You Correct. don't live the way that I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't live the way that Mark Riley thinks. So if Mark Riley connects to this particular storyline and connects to all these different things because of things that he went in his life, or maybe there's a particular thing he connects to a relationship with his dad or his mom and that plays into and it, it will hit harder who the hell are you to say that or me to say like oh you're wrong for liking this movie i don't agree with you on this movie yeah. at all and but, yeah and and, but I, don't, and I don't agree with you right and, and that's yeah. and having this conversation is wonderful yeah, right it's wonderful to have this because when we're on social media everybody wants to make social media a fight and a fight, movie yeah. black and white it's like revel in the gray Right, jump into the story. Dive. I, I said it once. Dive in there. Experience all the colors of this thing yeah. because it's a whole spectrum of colors that you're not going to just go. Nope, it's black. It's white. It's this. It's that. No, no. People. It's landing on people differently, and it's like I wish it's like you, it landed differently with you guys. I yeah. really do. Sometimes, because, and this is not everybody, but yeah. like sometimes people, sometimes emotion is the reason people yell and scream. But sometimes. Dumb people just yell and scream. That's just, it's <laughs> yeah. true. Sometimes just dumb people just yell and they don't know how to express themselves. So they call you names or they say this or they say that you're part of the system. And it's dumb people. There's mm-hmm. other there, there's people who can actually put together an argument. Like I've seen so many great things on these discussions that we've that, or these rewatches. Of people going, well, I don't necessarily agree with you on this because this, 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 and this, and this. It's been very, you know, very few dumb people. Um, <laughs> that, that I've seen on this thing. I mean, there's you're gonna see like I'm, for dumb people, I just hide them off the channel. I don't want I don't want them no, to be part too, of this discussion because yeah. I don't because this is a different time where back from when we used to do on both Collider and Schmoes, like I just like conversations. People not having the same opinion as you, that's part of is it. It's okay. It's part of it. It's and, just I yeah. just don't I don't have time for dumb people. No, but I'm I'm with you. Like I really do. The parts that connect me to Star Wars the most, growing up and now, is fear and failure. Yeah, and I think those parts worked for me in this film. And not perfectly, but they definitely worked for me. But what makes a great film to me is that the B plot has to work, yeah. and the care you have to be and invested, it in, and it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. fair. So look, so before because Steph's gotta get out of here so what, before we sign off what we have been doing on every one of these rewatches is we're connecting um the movies somehow can we connect them to any of the television series right so mm-hmm. i think this is the same connection that the force awakens has right and that's a matter of eventually in one of these series whether it's um whether it's uh and or or whether most likely it'd be mandalorian Mention of the First Order, the cloning stuff that's happening with... They've already been setting that up throughout Mandalorian yep. of the uh, the Emperor trying to come back and doing that. And they're going to give that silly line in Rise of Skywalker of Dark Sith cloning magic some for some relevance. You know, the, the, that, that will... Yeah, think yeah that's going to pop up. That's what's going to happen. The same way that Attack of the Clones has become significantly better now because of the, the Clone Wars animated series sure. um i think that the mandalorian <clears throat> will do the same for both this movie and and it was going to be other characters and things that set up maybe you see canto bite show up in maybe like the acolyte or something along those lines i think that that's that's a possibility of of how they do that but what do you what do you think stuff yeah i was trying to think about that during the entire watch like how is this going to connect at all and i hope that it does like in the same ways that clone wars makes the prequels a lot better for me i hope that there's something that fills in kind of the areas that i didn't want but i it just made me think that i hope in the future there's something more with finn yeah because i think that the but i don't know exactly i think yeah probably mandalorian yeah riley what do you think uh, I think if they go forward on the Rangers of the New Republic, that's where we would see some of the 
politics get involved because even Favreau shared like one of the very first things he shared online was a synopsis and it okay. mentions the first order. Oh, does it? It okay. says before it's like, well, you know, you after the fall of the empire and before the rise of, of, um, the, uh, first order, yada, yada, yada. And I think he, yada, he made yada, a point. Yada, 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 yada. I think he made a point to say that because we are going to get there sooner or later. I think it, it, it would work with the Rangers of the new Republic. I don't think that show's going to happen though. Do you? Yeah. I think it still could happen. Think so? I, I think there's the idea is bigger than the character. I know, and but I, 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 and I understand. Totally. I, I don't. Know? I don't disagree, but I just think that they're going to put it on the back burner for now. I mean, we're going to find could. out. We're going to look. That's another thing. Just to reiterate for right. you guys, um, next Friday, not going to be doing Rise of Skywalker. Next week, we'll be back for the rewatch in two weeks. But next week, going to be doing a full Sith Council. I'm I'm going to be re- the, reacting to the trailers as they come out right away that that's gonna that's gonna be up on the channel so um whether because they're saying obi-wan's gonna in a trailer yeah and or probably what they're saying with the and or from star wars news net it looks like it's gonna be more of a ba- behind the scenes thing like mm-hmm. like they did for rogue one for celebration yeah like that's what they're talking uh, and there'll probably be some dates and casting for like acolyte and things of that nature right so that that's probably some of the stuff but the main trailer is going to be obi-wan but what i will do and i'll t- see if steph's going to be around but we'll mm-hmm. we'll do a um Sith Council show on all the stuff that drops that day, and then we'll be back for for the other one. But um, yeah, we'll see. Maybe that maybe we hear about Rangers, or maybe we don't. Maybe maybe maybe, they, maybe yeah. we get a new maybe movie announced. Lando, they didn't, they didn't talk. Lando hasn't been mentioned since no, since I that don't. Investors Day, I mean, because they never even mentioned that Glover was even signed on. I know. Yeah, was... I think it's glo- on Glover's end a yeah. lot. Of, yeah, yeah, I think he's, he's not just, just like pause. I'm good. Yeah, he's good. working on so much. So right much. Now. All right, look, this is a good one. This is one of our longer one, and it's another one. This movie's like seven hours long. It didn't need to be as long as it is. Um, <laughs> Shut your mouth. Either way, uh, this was this was a fun one. Love you, Mark. There's only there's only <laughs> one movie left though, Steph. We did this whole I thing. Know. There's only one movie left, so we'll be we're, we're leading up to to the Boba Fett trailer. I mean, we even talked about the Boba Fett trailer. Should we talk about it? You got you really have to go. No, I can I can stay. Let's talk about Boba Fett, the Boba Fett trailer real quick. Who Boba Fett? <laughs> I, did you not like the trailer? Oh, I love the trailer. It, uh, I really like the trailer because Sopranos. It was yeah. Sopranos. <laughs> it, was, it, it was very intimate. It was yeah. very it, it was very character driven. I was like, this is not Boba Fett. He even says in the trailer, it's like, well, you're a bounty hunter. He's like, I'm a bounty hunter now. Right. He's like he's, he's making moves. He's a gangster. That's what, this is the gangster Star Wars that I've been waiting yes. for. It's the underworld stuff. Yes. It's the underworld so, stuff, and especially Boba Fett. He's just like, no, speak freely at the table. You, you MFers better, are you, dead. You better now. you better not speak freely. <laughs> and it is. It's like the Tony Soprano Boba Fett story, which I which I love, and I love the idea of it because it's like it's like the thirteen thirteen stuff that they were gonna do. You remember the yeah, the yeah video that, game that, that video they were game working was supposed on to be Boba Fett. And they had the Tales from the Bounty Hunter. They had the Josh Trank movie. They had all this stuff. And from Mangled then was going to do it, right? Yeah, there was yeah. a rumor too. But the big, the big thing that was always talked about was that the origin of how the Mandalorian came about is that John Favreau. And again, this is not this is not fact. This is just stuff that was kind of rumored behind the scenes. And yeah. but he wanted to do a Boba Fett series, and he sent Filoni the script that he did, and I think it was Boba Fett, right? And he did, and it was like these Boba Fett socks or whatever the hell it was, right? and. And then Filoni was like, from this, not confirmed, but we can't do Boba Fett because this, this, and this, but we could explore Mandalore and do this. And then that's how ultimately that came about. But then I think Favreau was kind of the one who was pushing, well, can we put Boba Fett in it? Can we do Boba Fett? And he puts Boba Fett in it and gets Boba Fett back in the conversation. And that goes back so organic. It did. And it goes back to plan and why plan is so important. You go back and look at the gallery series during that first episode when you see the boots. When he shows up, yeah. there's a scene from that episode when they shot it, when Favreau and Filoni are talking, and, and Favreau's like, "You think they're gonna they're gonna know it's him?" Yeah, and like, and they're like, they knew it was him. It wasn't like, well, put this is what JJ would have done. He would have put the boots in there. Who's it gonna be? Oh, there's a lot of characters it could be. We'll figure it out later. Yeah, and that's not what these guys are doing. These guys are going, no, 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 no. He's the gonna do this. The minute the Spurs hit, man, spur. I was like, yeah. that's Boba Fett. He's man. gonna do this because that's gonna lead to this. We'll eventually get him to team up and then do that. And then Favreau's like, yeah, yeah, but then I can get my series. And what if we did like Boba Fett going back to Tatooine, wax Bib Fortuna, take off, bib. take him out, Love that take him out, and then take over Tatooine. That was what he wanted to do. He wanted to take. He's been. He has been working in Jabba's syndicate for years mm-hmm. as like a foot soldier. And 
being the guy to do the bounties, take the hit. That's what you said. I'm not a bounty hunter, right? He's had bigger goals throughout his year, and now he takes over, and he's sitting with all the bosses at that table. It's like, are you kidding me? The series, I never wanted a Boba Fett movie, never cared about a Boba Fett series. The way that they set him up in Mandalorian, this is the beauty and why we talk about the series mm-hmm. so much is that when you make me care about a character inside of a movie or inside of a series, then after I'm de- after it's developed, then I care. I care way more, and I'm I'm way more excited about this now. Had it been four years ago, and they're like, you get a Boba Fett series. I'm like, eh. Yeah. Today, I'm like, d- 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 yes, please, especially with, with, with Fennec Shen walking around. She doesn't leave his side. Yeah. She's, she's like, like a Silvio death. Dante. Yeah. 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 And the idea that Boba Fett, it just, again, I, I love it when Star Wars does the echoes. I yeah, love it yeah. when, the, the, you know, and he walks in there and he just delivers a line that's like, you know, like my father before me, which is such a Star Wars, you know, obviously <laughs> with Luke, but that it's his birthright that yeah. it's like this armor is in, and it's like, I'm just a simple man making his way in the galaxy, Wait. saying what Jango Fett said. The best and that lines. the identity of Boba Fett. That is the heart of the character when he shows up again and says, I'm just a simple man making my way across the galaxy. I, like my father before me, I went, ooh, there's character. There's some stuff in there. There's some loyalty. I am Mandalore. Look at what's been printed on my arm. And the connection there, and when you get that flavor, that he is a clone as well. Yep. But he calls him, you know, Jango Fett, the, his father, was rightly so. Um, and then you consider that character and that proud history sitting down, to take out MFers, to take over the the underworld, give me all of this. <laughs> yeah, I and, love it. And give me Cad Bane. Cad Bane's gonna be in this. Yeah, I hope I so. Agree. Oh, one hundred percent, he's in this. Oh man, so show yeah. up at the end, like at the end of season, because there's no He'll be a main character. I think now they haven't talked about mm-hmm. they haven't talked about whether or not this is a miniseries. They have no Obi Wan. We know is a miniseries. Yeah, right. I think that we could see like many seasons. seasons. Yeah, if Depending. they do this the right way, sign me up for it. I was never like, as I said, never really super excited about the a, a gangster a gangster movie. And it looks and when he's got the axe and you hear like the thump at it. Oh man, this is right around the corner. So f- again, for people, the, so you know, Sith Council will be reviewing these spoiler heavy episodes. So myself, Mike, and, and Steph will be doing weekly episode. I'll do, as they drop, I'll do, like, the little mini reviews, but then we'll do, like, deep dives for the actual episodes, and that'll be coming up. So if you're not subscribed to this channel, please do so. Mm-hmm. Go to the subscribe button. We're over, uh, we're over 20,000 subscribers now, so thank you, everybody. Download us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, wherever podcasts are found, Sith Council. And thank you to Mark Riley. Mark, what do you got going on? Where should people find you? Yeah, well, uh, big announcement for uh, what happened this past week, but I'm excited to get back to my channel. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be la- uh, yeah, launching my channel, building a home studio. It's uh, uh, youtube.com slash Mark Riley Roundtable. You can go find me or just Google my name, at Riley Around. I'm going to be doing uh, Riley's Cantina now twice a week. I'm going to be doing uh, trailer reactions, and I'm going to be doing, uh, you know, I can't wait for Bo- Boba Fett because yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll be doing deep dives on that yeah. too, man. So uh, go follow me there. Check me out on my channel. Awesome. Well, thank you. And Steph, yeah. World Girls, what yep. do we got? Just a bunch of whirling. Just a bunch of whirling. <laughs> Just a bunch of whirling. You don't want to miss it. Whirl around. All right, guys. So thank <laughs> you guys so much. That uh, episode when you guys went to Halloween Horror Nights, oh, that was really fun. <laughs> yeah. You guys Check that out. Check out World Girls. Check out Riley's channel. And check us out next week because we're going to do a full breakdown on everything happening at the Disney Plus panel for... Um, for the Star Wars Day. So thank you guys so much, and we'll see you next time. I can feel your anger. It gives you focus, makes you stronger.